All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an entertaining email that was sent from a subscriber. That's from a guy, he is 29 years old, and he shares his story how two years ago he ended his relationship with his then fiance. You're going to see in his story that they, they were just polar opposites. She was clearly terrible with money, in my opinion, using him for money. Just a bad situation. He knew he deserved better and wanted a better life, and he ended it with her. Went about on a journey to really turn his life around, found my material, as well as other channels. Improved his life in terms of his job, got a much better paying position. Got his body in great shape, started improving his social skills. And then he went on to the dating scene. And to no surprise, after bettering himself, he learned that it's just as bad as he's learned about in these channels. However, he still wanted to hook up, and he started uh, seeing this gal who became a friend with benefits. But you're going to see this gal, although very pretty, brought along her uh, a past with trauma and drama. And you're going to see here, although he was well aware of this and to keep her at arm's length at Friends of Benefits, you're going to see it's going to back up the age-old thing about don't get involved with gals that claim they have trauma in their past and issues and because it's only going to come, potentially come back in your life. And it ends on a high note, but it's definitely a good warning sign. So you got a story here that's entertaining. Definitely some funny things here. And oh, by the way, the gal on their first date mentioned she only been with one guy. And as you're going to see... That's not the case, especially when you see what she previously did for a living. But a good story here that's entertaining, but also about a guy getting his life together, turning things around, and some amusing drama along the way. So it starts off, it says here, uh, hello SSM. A little background about myself. I'm a 29-year-old guy, single, and in the process of getting my life together and following my purpose. Well, bro, based on your story, you are well on your way and you're doing a very good job. I'm proud of you. Although, your choice, your recent decision-making lately with his friends of benefits, you know, I hope you learn from it. About two years ago, I went through a bad, a bad heartbreak. I was with a girl for about seven years before it ended. We were engaged, living with her mom, and I was struggling at the time with an entry-level position in my career. I was making $17 an hour, which was laughable, under, underpaid in my field. During the relationship, I was given an ultimatum by my ex. Either plan to marry her or don't waste your time. Obviously, I deserve a smack because I eventually proposed. Smack! You're goddamn right. And I know you know this now. Guys, you give an ultimatum, you walk away. But the odds are you could probably tell the ultimatum's coming because she's that type of gal that would give an ultimatum. No good relationship, any good relationship, comes about by, you know, forcing you. Forcing you ultimatum making threats and all that uh says here the mother was pressuring her about when i was going to marry her daughter at that time i was studying to get my certification for my field so despite the pressure i passed my exam uh one thing that really stressed me out was that i could never save money with her there'd be times i'd have to lie about how much money i had to not be pressured to spend it from eating out to constant vacations, I always felt like I couldn't achieve the things I wanted with that type of lifestyle. Now, I had conversations with her about saving money, but the less days we went on, put more strain on the relationship. I was always saving for the next six months for a vacation, then do it all over again. So, guys, you can see already they're, they're incompatible. This guy wants to put money aside, build wealth, all that, and you can't do that with a girlfriend or fiance and definitely not wife who spends every penny that comes in or worse racks up money and has a constant revolving debt of credit card debt and stuff like that. it's not going to work you're not compatible and of course the whole ultimatum crap it's not gonna and, and in my opinion she's using him you need to, to lay down the law which clearly at the time you didn't have the strength to do you're different now because you've really worked on yourself but back then yeah, it's not going to work I noticed that she started gaining comfort weight. Interesting, after you uh, proposed to her and put a ring on her finger, I mean uh, an engagement ring, she started putting on pounds. Shocker. You gave her certainty with that uh, proposal. She never blew up like a blimp, but I told her about it before, before it got too out of control. And as you'd expect, she got a little upset. So she didn't work out. She didn't have any hobbies outside of partying. To be fair, she did have a really good work ethic and always worked hard for her money, regardless of what she decided to do with it. Shortly after, I proposed, I really started thinking about the relationship and what the future would be like with her. 
SEX was never much of a problem outside of the fact that I always initiated. The only reason I got I got it consistently was that most likely I always knocked it out of the ballpark in the bedroom. Dude, let's let's not get carried away, Casanova. I never felt I never felt wanted despite I always did my best to stay in shape, exercising and doing MMA. She was settling. End of story, you know? She was getting close to 30 years old. She was settling. Believe me, if a woman really likes you, she's going to put a lot more effort into the relationship. And I know thing, you were there for seven years, and I get things aren't like they are in the beginning in the honeymoon period, but this chick is not really into you and just using you for the resources to spend money and so she can have that lifestyle and vacations and all that. <clears throat> uh, one day at work, a new girl started, younger, played soccer, in school for EMT, and I'll admit that there was some mutual attraction. I never made a move, but I think we both kind of knew. She had a boyfriend, I had my fiancé. But the thought of I can do better lingered in me. Is this girl I'm with holding me back? During the next couple weeks, the fiancé started looking to buy a property to live in. How can you be looking to buy a property to live in when this girl pisses away all the money? And let me guess, she probably wants something way bigger than you can afford. Uh, is the girl I'm with holding me back? Blah, blah, blah. I wanted to buy a house or a condo during that search. It really only felt like I was doing the work. I was the one realistically looking for what we can afford. A few months later, I made the decision of leaving her. I went to look at a condo by myself and planned for me to get one for myself. Thinking of it now, it was a really shitty thing for me to do, to not be open up front. I couldn't bear the guilt, and she could tell. Dude, you were planning your exit strategy. There's no, you can't plan the exit strategy without telling the gal that you're planning the exit strategy. You know, she was a giant pain in the ass. It wasn't working. She didn't treat you the way you deserved. So you had a right to start figuring out your exit strategy, looking for a place to move, blah, blah, blah. Because we all know darn where, well the gals, they'll plan their exit strategy and be ruthless. There you go with the rain. Speaking of rain, all you guys in the uh, Gulf Coast, I, I wish you all the safety in, in the world with uh, the hurricane coming through. Please be, hope you're all right. Be careful. Anyway. I told her about it, and she was hurt. I was losing control of myself in a way. I had a childhood friend that I connected with recently, and something told me to call and stay with him. One day I decided to tell my ex that I, had, I couldn't go through with it anymore. It was hard, very emotional, but I knew I had to do this. She helped me pack my things, and I left. I called my friend and stayed with him. There was some back and forth with my ex for some months. I don't want to go into that right now because it's no longer important to the story, but what happened during those months changed my entire life. As if anyone is interested, I can share the story of what happened. But the pain made me strong. The loving situation motivated me to get my shit together. Bro, I'm sure it wasn't easy. You spent a big significant amount of your life with her, but it wasn't working. You knew it wasn't right, and you you felt you deserved better. And you know what? Guys are allowed to want to deserve better. Some guys may say, well, you sound like the girls. Well, there's different with guys, and you all know that. The girls are being treated like second-class citizens as a majority of the guys are nowadays. Within four months, I bought my first condo at age 27. Congratulations, brother. Good for you for making it happen. And by the way, guys, he's embarking on his self-improvement journey. So listen to all the things he says here. Also, I stopped smoking weed daily and limited drinking socially. to socially. I then got a better job at the hospital making $26 an hour, only to get a raise a few months later making $34 an hour. Congratulations, man. $17 an hour to 26 to 34 There you go. Guys, you have to work for what you want in this world. It's not going to just fall into your lap. But a lot of people in this world don't want to work for it anymore and just expect to be given high, a high-paying a high, a high paying job and benefits all that. you got to work for it. And you got to make something yourself and improve yourself. Find a way. This guy did here. But it doesn't stop there. It says here, I work with a lot of women in the hospital, and I wanted to learn to talk to women a bit better. I worked on my personality, my style, and was back at the gym four to five days a week. Over the next few months, the work paid off. I was a, I was no gig at Chad, but I did start getting looks from the gals. I was able to have decent conversations with the girls. I decided to take salsa classes to put myself out there. Well, I'm assuming it's salsa dancing, not salsa making. I'd prefer to go to a salsa making class. You're not going to see me out in the fucking dance floor. But then again, you know, there are certain stereotypes. You know, certain types of dudes can't dance. And believe me, I can't fucking dance to save my life. 
I was never the person who liked to dance, but a few months later, I was performing in front of audiences of 100 people or so at the studio. This brought so much confidence to me. I changed the way I dress and even the way I walk, posture and all. This was a game changer. I went from a broken boy to a strong, successful male. I was watching your channel as well as others for over a year or two right now. This gave me all the information on female nature and how to attract. With this knowledge, I now entered the dating scene. I heard it was bad, so I wasn't expecting much, but I was still disappointed. Welcome to modern dating, my man. I was using dating apps, and regardless of who I met or talked to, they always seemed to have some sort of major red flag. But I still wanted some ass, so I had to do what I had to do. Sounds about right to me. He says, I matched with this girl, and we met up the following day at Starbucks. Upon meeting her, the first thing she says to me is, Hey, don't you recognize me? I must have looked at this girl like she was crazy, but I told her no, I did not. She then said, You have a nice black car that you work on outside, right? At this point, alarms are going off in my head. And she says, Wait, let me explain. I'm your neighbor. And now it made sense to me what was going on. We both continued the date, and we were t talking for a good amount of time when she just started telling me her whole life story and all the trauma. Check, please. Or if you already paid for your coffee, say, hey, I gotta run. Or go to the bathroom and say, shit, my mom just called. She's gone to the hospital. I gotta go check on her. A gal tells you that she's your neighbor, and you don't want to be dating your neighbor. You don't shit where you eat or shit where you sleep. And she tells you she has trauma in her past. Goodbye. The thing is, this woman here is a hottie. And wait till you see what she did for a living. Now I'm playing it off cool, not judging, and just playing my part to secure the cheeks. I'm not surprised at all the stuff she's telling me. Sadly, I was kind of expecting a lot of it. So the date goes well. We decided to go to Hooters afterwards. We met up at Hooters and we were just talking. Now, just after I heard everything she told me bef before, I'm thinking to myself, if this is everything she told me right away, I'm kind of curious about what I haven't heard. Very smart, man. You definitely learned this by watching a lot of YouTube channels. Right. If she's telling you some things up front and she had trauma in her past, what isn't she telling you? Well, you're going to find out. So the conversation is going and now she hits me with the, hey, I want to tell you something, but I don't want it to be awkward. In my head, I'm thinking, here it comes, let's hear it. I tell her in a calm voice, hey, I don't want to judge you or anything. She then tells me that she used to be a stripper. Of course she was. Now I know what you're all thinking. Yes, he can nail a stripper. Sure, they. I'm sure she's a hottie, and I'm sure she's good in the sack because clearly she has practice. I don't care anybody says, they just don't dance, guys. But do you want all that in your... And by the way, former stripper, and says so she has trauma in her past, and she's your neighbor. This can bring a lot of drama in your life, which I want you guys to be drama-free. Now in my mind, I'm thinking, hell yes, but of course, I know she's not relationship material. You're darn right. She's honestly, if you're looking at... If you don't want any drama, she's also not dating material, hookup material. She's hookup material, but there's a price. The potential drama that can come into your life. And the possibility that you could get hooked on her, which a lot of guys could. I answer telling her, damn, that's cool, and acted interested, very lightheartedly. Now, I haven't spent a dime on this gal, and even at Hooters, this girl went halves with me. If anything, over the time we've been messing around, she brings the alcohol and will order pizza. He's now speaking in past tense because he's obviously hooking up with this girl, nailing her. I mean, I mean, he's hooking up with her, nailing her. Same fucking thing. He's obviously hooking up with her and seeing her and all that. Hell, she's left food and some Tupperware at my house, hanging on my doorknob. As we're walking out, I invited her over for a movie that night, and she accepted. And later that night, came and she came over. We watched the movie. I noticed her body language being nervous, so I didn't make any moves. After the movie, before she left, we talked a bit about her being nervous and that I wanted her to feel comfortable. It was the first day we were meeting, after all. Her coming to my house on the first day and staying kind of late was already good to me, and I didn't want to push it anymore. She did admit that she was nervous, and we playfully laughed it off while talking about it. She said she had the 4th of July party with her family the next day, and she'll need help with tying her dress in the morning. Hint, hint, hint. 
Well, the next morning, guess who came knocking at my door? She was still nervous, and when she came in, I asked her if she was okay. She said she was still nervous because she'd only been with one guy. <laughs> really, one guy. A former stripper has only been with one guy. Let's multiply that times, I don't know, 500? I'm thinking to myself, like, bullshit, more like 100. But it's game time right now, so I gotta make a move. I grabbed her hand while looking into her eyes, and I said in a dominant voice, Come here. I kissed her, and we headed to the bedroom. Before we started, I clarified with her that we're just having fun and seeing where things lead. We're both on the same page, so we can all guess what happened next. After the deed was done, she asked, Hey, I know we're just having fun, but do you want to get to know me? No, I don't want to get to know you. I just want to nail you, but I'll play along. Now I want to keep her. For, now I want to keep her coming around, so I got to be a little sleazy. I tell her, yes, I want to get to know her, but I reclarify that I'm not looking for anything serious. Telling a, a, a damaged gal that you're not looking for anything serious is like moth to a flame. She accepts the terms. I tell her goodbye, and I slap her on the ass on the way out. Now, during the weeks that followed, we're sleeping together, and she's telling me that she recently got out of a relationship that was five to seven years old. Now we're getting somewhere. The trauma, she was a stripper, uh, a previous relationship, five to seven years old. Which one is it? Five or seven? Also, the guy was supposedly engaged to her. She tells me how he was toxic and threatened to self-off himself if she left. Oh, imagine that, a former dancer with a uh, toxic ex. Who could have thought? You see what you're getting yourself into, bro? Do you see what you're bringing into your life? There's a price. This guy was supposedly engaged to her. Uh, her family doesn't know they broke up and that the wedding is called off. You're the rebound guy. She then tells me that the guy would hit her. So this gal attracts the scum of the earth and she tries to get away with it from him, supposedly. We'll keep that in mind for later. So if it, let's just say for argument's sake this is true. And this, this guy's like, this could become a problem for you. So this is where the is this piece of ass worth it comes into play. Okay, I learn more about her as she tells me her body count is now five people. We've gone from one to five people in a few weeks. Ah, oh, imagine that. I think I don't think she's done yet with those numbers. Now I'm not taking her very seriously, so I don't care to argue and pry or judge her. Honestly, it's probably best to act indifferent to this stuff with all women, so that way they can just keep telling them telling on themselves. You probably don't want to hear, but it's best to know what you're dealing with, right? So now she's telling me that this other ex and, and how he was terrible and a drug dealer. Typical Chad, nothing new. We somehow talked about going out to bars and how she had a one-night stand go wrong one night when, when her dad being home went with her and the dude walked out of the house making out. I playfully asked her, how many one-night stands has she had? And she says seven now. So her body count is no longer five. Let's just go with a guess of a modest number of 500 at this point. I would not be surprised if it's 500. It probably is. Again, I play dumb and go along with her stories to keep her talking. I know she has guy friends that she hangs out with. Some try to make moves. I'm sure I'm not the only guy friend either. But the whole situation is low stress. In the moment. She sleeps over on occasion, but for the most part, we see each other one time a week. I'm either at work or the gym, and I stole my bros as well. It's been a few months since I've been seeing her at this point. She one day tells me that the scum of the earth ex has friends that are living in the apartment across the driveway and that the ex plans to move in too. Oh, great. So you're now going to have her ex-boy, ex-fiance who dealt illegal substances and supposedly hit her and was abusive and toxic moving in across the street while you're going to be nailing his girl who he hasn't gotten over yet. Gee, what could go wrong? Do you see why you don't get involved with these types? Now, I don't get usually get too serious with her, but now I have to set the boundary. I can't say what exactly I said, but I made the point across that if he approaches me in any threatening way, things may happen. Oh, I'm sure she loved that. Two guys fighting over me? Oh, get the popcorn. Now, she described him to me recently, so while I'm not looking for trouble, but I can at least keep an eye out if he finds me by chance. This last month, I made a big decision to rent out my condo for some extra money. 
I'm selling one of my cars to relieve myself of a car note and keep, keep working on my car that pays off. I put a pause on dance as well as though I wanted to be competitive. I sacrificed a lot, a lot before, before to get where I am now. I'm determined now. I have to give up my comfort and not be complacent to achieve more. Now, I have trusted friends that are helping me run out the place. And while they're here, one steps out with his son to the patio area. Now, my friend, he sees my neighbor with some young guy. Now, I can't confirm it as of yet, but I believe the guy that she was describing was the ex's fiancé. Gee, what a surprise. He's back in the picture and they're uh, hanging out. Who could have saw that? My friend saw her, and when they locked eyes, she started to panic and tried to hide the guy in the house. My friend told me, and I told him who I thought it was. When I told him, we both busted out laughing. He says, we've been watching uh, your channels for some time now, so we kind of predicted the pattern. It's easy to predict. It's amazing. Human nature is not that hard to predict once you understand it, the ugly side of it. And we laugh because of how typical the behavior is. Like I said, I can't confirm if that was the ex or not, but I'm curious to hear his side of the story. Maybe this girl isn't who she says she is. Regardless, I plan to move on with my life after this month. I'll be out of the drama soon. Overall, I hope this story can show men not to settle for less and strive for more. If I get any updates, I can tell you. Yeah, dude, let me know some updates with this broad. I'd like to hear about it. But, yes, his story does show you you're not happy in your situation. Take action and move on. Break up, and if you're in a bad relationship, She's using you. You're, un, you're You have a genuine reason to be unhappy. All that type of thing. End it. Don't fall for bullshit ultimatums. Move on. And how you can turn things around. You hurt. Seventeen bucks an hour. Take an action. Working things around to get to thirty-four bucks an hour. Get hit in the gym. Getting in shape. Practice his social skills. Look how he's turning things around. Salsa. I could do without the salsa. I could do. A, I, I like salsa making. Not fucking salsa dancing. But he's on the right path. This is what you can do, guy. And got his condo. But also, the lesson here, aside from entertaining, is to keep your D out of crazy. Or keep your D out of girls that have a pat, have drama and trauma in their past. And it is amazing how just she trickled in the things about her, her body counts, and you didn't get even close to what the real number was, and all those other things. Those that work in that line of work in the SEX industry, save for somebody. I get it's tempting. I get real, I was young once. I'm, fuck, I'm still young. I'm 45. I'm, I'm a young 45-year-old. I was very young once, and I get the temptation. You don't need that shit, because it could have gotten way bad. But, bro, you're going to run out your place. Cool. Wherever you're living now, maybe with some bros. I don't know what you're doing, but uh, work hard, save more money. You can buy another condo, and you get nowhere I'm going with this. So I wish you all the best, and just walk away from her. And the next time some young piece of ass comes around you want to see, and she mentions things like this, I would say check, please, and move on. You just... You don't know what could become your way. But I'm glad you're doing well. It's an entertaining story for all of us. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below and what you think about this. And also, guys, you got a great story like to share, definitely email it to me, strongsuccessfulmail at gmail.com. I know there's been breaks with shows lately. I'm doing a lot of work to get packing and getting things ready for my move. So some days I have things I have to do for this whole giant move coming up in four and a half weeks. But I'm trying to do these things in waves, so just bear with me. So if you send me your material, give me time, I'll get to it. If it's a good one and I can get to it, I will. And sometimes it takes me a couple months to get to certain stories, so don't, don't worry about it. If it's definitely good, one, I'll cover it. And this also goes for other crazy stories I can share on my other channels as well. And if you like the video, share with your friends and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.